Best pissed around, obviously, for anyone joining us. This is Mouse Sports versus Team Kingwin. This is a best of one on D train. So the CT side will be Mouse Sports looking over towards Team Kingwin as well. Let's just have a quick look at their buy and see how that stacks up. We can see four sets of armor. Scream's going to be the utility player this time as we go into this first round. Let's see where they're going. Most players heading towards Ivy, actually. So you'd assume smoking the left hand side and trying to burst out together with the bomb. In one player going towards Pop Dog trying to. Potentially hold some flag, uh, flanks there. And the first frag does come in from Nico, though. Yeah, and oh. a second as well. Both one taps to the craniums of Dennis and Fox. He does get taken down. This allows the CTs now to get all the information in the world. The question now is, I said Kingwin yesterday, a fantastic pistol round team. And they are bouncing back with a vengeance. Makaleli with two frags. And even though Nico opens up beautifully through Ivy, it's not looking too good for them now. The jumping burst block, I think that was from Makaleli for his third frag. And here comes Chris Jay. He's connected the first shot. He has no defuse kits. So he's going to need to get a move on. He knows where at least one of these players is. But is he going to expect the double stack is the question. And the answer is maybe not. There's Rain with the headshot. Kingwin pick up the pistol. Yeah, what a master round from Makaleli coming from Pop Dark and getting all those kills. Basically, it looked so much for looking to go to mouse boards with Nico with those insane USB shots to start off with. But... Yeah, Michael Ella, the uh, man of the round. Yeah, we'd see this, the opening frags. We thought this one may have been tied up at that stage. Nico, obviously, played the right play, tried to get out of there, but as soon as they came out of Ivy, got taken down. Like you said, Michael Ailey, that nice flank from Pop Dog, takes down three players, and that's a huge round, considering. And now we have got the force by coming in. And now Sports is the player made the way out of Pop Dog here. Yeah, one for one trade, though. Although two CT players are incredibly low. And as we can see, the Rifles Plus Scout on King Win should be more than good enough to deal with this. Here comes Chris J from the back. Now he's making this expensive two P250 headshots in a row. And he's taken a Galil and managed to live to fight for another day. He has Kevlar as well, so aim punch is not going to be an issue for him. The question is, can he stop this plant? It hasn't gone down just yet. Is moving towards that A side. And Fox will have that planted very shortly. But this is a round that King Win would have been fancying themselves to tie up very comfortably indeed. And now... There's a, there's a chance that maybe they're going to let this one slip away. Still though, Chris J definitely in a disadvantageous position. Not fancy him to clutch this one out. And decent positions as well from King Gwyn. I think he will be going for the save here yeah. with no kit. He has got a Galil and Armour as well. It's definitely worth a save. We talked about Mal Sports forcing into the second round and costing themselves the AWP. But if we look at Chris J's money, he actually, after the three frags he actually picked up, and uh, potentially saving this round. I think he'll be okay. 1,500 in the bank right now. So potentially still could have that AWP dream. And uh, we can see the last two players from Kingwin surviving there as well. So like you said, expensive round for Kingwin. But when you get the bomb down and win the round, it's normally not too bad. We can see round Rain going to get the MAC-10 in hand. And we say that's normally the good reaction for this. It means you can go into a bomb sites, particularly like somewhere like inside. Not have to face against armored players and get some... Uh, Quick headshots on the board. Michael Ailey actually not going to be buying anything whatsoever. They're keeping the silence USP. And that obviously suggests he will be going for the sniper rifle himself next round. So, looks like another fast play from King Winner. And with that MAC-10, this makes a lot of sense. You can just get all up in the grill of the enemy and just take them down. And we see the aforementioned USP doing work for Michael Ailey, So that's going to be funds into his AWP buy up next round. And a clear cut round as well from King Win. So a lot more what you'd expect from them, and that Galil on Chris J didn't really do anything that round, although not necessarily his fault, it was a really good set play down. Yeah, that's the whole thing, King Wind just went for a very fast to take out there, not really much you can do in the pistols, and that sort of position is very long range map train traditionally, so I was going to say, Chris J could have picked up the glass cannon there, but he's actually opted to go for the M4 here, so they've got five rifles, five smokes as well, so they have got a lot to play with in terms of uh, holding the terrorists out here, but all five players actually going to be heading towards the inside area so far. It'll be interesting to see where they head with this. I've got to go try and pop the dog. It seems like everyone's going to commit to inside. King Gwyn normally do his first gun round. They'll try and do something quite fast and surprising. Yeah, no AWP as well on the side of uh, Makaleli. So that USP just going straight into the AK-47. And you can see here that Chris, his spidey sense is potentially tingling. He's just going to back away to try and hold a better angle. The issue here, though, I was about to say that he's kind of by himself, but there is a player in connector there, so he should be okay. Smokes, flashes, the whole nine yards coming out from Kingwin. And here we go, the push is in, that last flashbang absolutely wrecked Chris J, but he's still in the same position on this angle, gets the first frag. Dennis in the meanwhile answers back onto Rain. Nex is pushing up round here onto the site. Nice frag onto Fox, looking for a second, he picks up the second, not quite able to land the third, but the damage was definitely done, and Mouse Sports, an important round for them, take it with three players remaining.
I'm not a huge fan of that play. When you do, when you don't have any presence on the map as T side whatsoever, and you don't show any sort of players towards either Ivy, Main, Pop Dog whatsoever, it's almost silent out there. It's it's almost very easy for the mouse sports not to rotate whatsoever. They had two players waiting for them. Next, picking up two huge frags, and the set piece came in from the T side, but didn't lead to an anything. But we saw. Michael Eddy not investing too much in that round the AK. And we can see that aggressive push. Nico going to be pushing Ivy right now. Will he be able to make anything of this? Oh, not really. He's going to get him. No, Ooh. he's not going to get him the second time of asking. Scream survives with six HP. And that could be a crucial frag as well on Ivy. They now have to send a player over there from the CT's perspective. And they're caught in transition from rain. So huge opening picks from Team Kinguin. The CT's are going to be struggling here. Absolutely. Not really much you can do to get in. Five on three situation. This is definitely Kinguin's one to lose. They're not committing too much here. They know they've got the picks in hand. Just going to smoke off key choke points down. Try and stay as a unit. Well, Nex is still doing work. He started very well today, so that's maybe good signs for Mouse Sports. The issue is that he's just been taken down from rain. And Godby is trying to hold on with Chris J, and he can't do much from this position. Chris J behind the site. He's going to peek out, and there is Fox again. Four players left alive for King Gwent. Very good pick, but it all came off the back of two entry frags. Yeah, the big problem really there at Mouse Sports. Uh just dying one by one, really. There was no revenge kills whatsoever coming in there. King Wynn making it look really, really easy, to be honest with you. Well, now it's obviously the hell situation yeah. for Mouse Sports here. Mm. You win in the best one, of one as well. In the yeah. best of one, especially. You go back into the next with $1,400. I think they're going to buy next one as well. We all know that, right? So, yeah, what well, they could potentially have <laughs> M4s or Famuses. UMPs. U UMPs, yeah, you're right, actually. They <laughs> love a UMP on train. But now, another simple round you would assume for King Wynn here. They're going to be aware of where the money lies. Dennis just there uh, trying to work some sort of intel. He got actually headshot for his trouble as well. So he goes down to 37 HP. But the CT, you can see one of them pushed up in the lower rounds. Could be Chris J. Pretty nice position. Could cause some damage from there. We've already seen that P250 is capable of landing those headshots. So he's got a, a pretty decent angle for it, I guess. But Rain, again, is going to get the opening pick. And he starts to push through connector. He is looking for any CTs. Now he's really straggling across and he does find one. We'll get traded out from Nex. Nice second frag from Nex as well. So he's doing work with the Deagle, but the issue is it's just strength in numbers from Kinguin. And they do pick up the fifth round as expected. Well, look at the money now for Mouse. This is what oh, me and Nats were just talking about. It's about 3,500 average across the board, I'd say. One player. They're not actually going to force buy this. It's going to be the quasi buy. So loss bonus kind of helping them out a little bit. You can see they can justify some body armor, some deagles for five sevens, but saving about 2k average in the bank means they will have a decent buy next round. So they're actually showing Good some call. discipline here and actually I liked it. give themselves a, a chance to have a full gun round next time. Let's see if it pays off for them. Taking fairly passive rolls. There's Nico again, the 1D. Gives him a real lifeline in this round, but here comes the retaliation from Kinguin. Scream lands the first shot onto Nex, who's been instrumental so far. There's Fox as well, chiming in, and this force not quite paying off just yet for Mouse. But as you said, they are going to be able to get weapons next round. It's all on Chris J. He's been the last player a couple times. Does get a pretty nice 5-7 shot, and the second as well, but that's all she wrote for him. And Kinguin moved to six rounds now. Yeah, well, this Mouse Force was able to make it... Pretty expensive for King Wind there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Obviously, um, all sports is doing a buy there, where, which allows them here to, to get a affordable situation. They have a bunch of nades to work with them. And Dennis buying an AWP, actually. It's not Chris J on the off this time. That's that's interesting, right? Oh. Because that's when you know Chris J is not feeling confident. He actually admits it. He, he's not going to enforce the situation every single time. It'll allow Dennis to actually take that role. At the same time, he's playing inner bomb side, so maybe that's that's a choice. He's got the Orc as well. That. We've seen him play the Krieg a few times this event. Yep. What can he do with the Orc? Definitely a viable weapon, but can he make it work for him in this situation? He's going to get some confrontation as well. Oh, there's two frags. It's Dennis that comes good for Chris J as well. He's still up the back, but he gets picked off. Long range from Rain, who gets another two entries. This guy is on fire right now. And this would be such a scary position if Mouse Sports lose this eighth round. They're trying to push in. They're trying to play the aggressor. Gobby goes in, gets himself two frags. That's absolutely huge for the CTs. But now Dennis is coming back with frags of his own, pushing on through. Onto the site, he gets tanked and fragged from next. Good hold from Mouse Sports, but they do lose three players. I think we can conclude that Chris Che also can work with the Ark as well. Getting that pick there together with Dennis and making it hard for uh, Kingwood into the bomb side. It could have been even harder for Kingwood actually had Mouse Sports had Molotovs there. You can see the difference right away when you don't have the economy for, for Molotov. It's going to be always pr a lot easier for a team to do s run such a simple strat as Kingwood just did. Trying to plow down from the lower ramp to inner bomb site. Not out of the woods yet for Mouse Sports here. The money's still a difficult situation for them. Chris J going to be on a max seven. Not a lot of utility to play for. No incendiaries whatsoever. And the aggression keeps continuing from Kingwin here. 
We see Nico sneaky, himself sneaky. in a difficult situation here. Could, could go big or could end up with nothing. So let's see. This one unfolds. He's going to push through the smoke with a flash as well. You can see the player actually turns to his right hand side. It doesn't matter. Nico's looking for the double Perfect. spree. Now he gets it. And more importantly, the bomb's been dropped as well. So the CTs have started this round, as Natu said, absolutely perfectly. I think we need to get some entries right now, otherwise this round is pretty much all over. And there is next once more. Dennis chimes in. Chris J from behind. Does get frag, will be a bit disappointed with that, but still, the rest of his team have pulled through. I think the game plan from Kingwin there was to go for that first pick and especially try to force that from Ivy. Not able to do that. And then only three players players left from Kingwin. Try to go outside, but it wasn't really feasible at that point anymore. Finally, they mouse force break. King Gwyn and actually stabilize their own economy going into the round number 10 here. Obviously, King Gwyn with a huge bank of rounds so far. Anything else at this stage, I'd say, would be a bonus. They're doing very well yep. on this T half. And we can see they are going to get some tech nines. Then he's actually opting for Deagle and head armor as well. So that could cause some damage, but not, term, not much in terms of grenades here. I think they had one smoke going down. I assume they're just going to try and get a cheeky plant here as they come out of the pop dog area. Let's see if they can push on through here into pop dog. Not a player in main as well, I think, or just hiding outside. So they could start to push through together. Here we go, got B spots, multiple players, and the call will come in very quickly next from the side here. From CT Connector is looking to put down the hurt, but Godby's fall. There's Nico with two. He's been fragged as well, and it's always going to be more expensive for the CTs in these kind of situations. And in actual fact, they could just slip away in this round. The bomb will be getting planted here. In the meanwhile, Nex has chimed in with a frag. He's looking for another one. He knows the bomb's behind the site from where he's stood. But he still falls down oh. now. Dennis gets a double with the Deagle. And that is a crushing defeat for Mouse Sports. Honestly, though, I think that kill on uh, Gobby shouldn't have happened. But he did not invest in a head armor, causing him to die through a single bullet from a yep. P250, which was a huge kill as well. But look at this Dennis here being a Dennis Beast, as it says in his nickname as well. That Two Ds. Finished. They're going to be disappointed that one. But now we can see it's when it goes a little bit wrong for Mouse Sports. UMP coming out once again. We have absolutely no kits, no nades. This could be GG. They lose this one. It's going to force me to double eco situation. So let's see what happens here. King Gwyn definitely in the driving seat right now. First frag definitely required, I'd say, from Mouseports here. They have to find something. See Chris J left alone towards the inside bomb site. That must absolutely wreck your confidence as well. Around that you're like, we have to win this, boys. We've got all the advantages in our favor. Right. And then suddenly there's the Deagle. You feel like you're on a comeback, comeback train. You've gone up, <laughs> down what 1-6 to start off with. And then that happens. And they've lost the first player in this round too. Make that the second. Again. Rain is just entering like a boss today. And to be fair, yesterday, I, I mentioned this before, Mirage, he was doing a very similar thing as well. Godby's answered Mac, but his position has been compromised. And Fox lands a grenade square on his head. And it's all on Chris J, who's typically been coming up from the behind on Pop Dog, and you can see here that Dennis knows exactly that, so he's just waiting with the Molotov. And Chris J with the UMP in a 1v3? I mean, no, surely not. This should be 8 3. Well, no kidding, a UMP, you don't really want to invest. Odds on this one yeah, happening. Odds on this, dude. This could be a very difficult <laughs> situation for him. And you can see the bomb does go down there. And yeah, I, I think the big storyline so far in this matchup has to be Rain and his ability to get mm -hmm. those first skills mm -hmm. very on many very occasions. So it's it's um, it's been very hard for Mouse Sports. Obviously, struggling with the economy as well. Again, and doing a bunch of force buys in situations where maybe they should have just gone for the save. Well, this is going to pick King win, push him over to the actual half win here. So eight rounds on the board. Mouse Sports, like we said. Chris J may be able to save his UMP, but I'm not really sure he's going to do with it. Most of the other team definitely looking at a double eco here, I would say, if they want to come back with the AWP. So Pretty much. UMP in hand for Chris J. Has got head armor as well. The other guys can't really justify forcing anything to this. Maybe some P250s. I wouldn't even say that. It's a round you cannot win. So I would say probably have Chris J baited in somewhere. Maybe he can wait an Ivy. <laughs> and uh, he can get. they can try and bait him in to get a couple of close range kills here. We can see only one P250 being bought. It's going to be on next. The rest of the guys, like I said, can't really justify absolutely anything here. But rate of fire and, and armor penetration on the UMP is surprisingly good, though. So absolutely. If you, can, if you get into a favorable situation, things can that's, happen. That's what I'm saying. They can try and bait him in somewhere yep. to give him some sort of little spray down here. There we go. The headshot is made there. We should be able to get a kill here as well. Takes down Fox, but Dennis answers back onto Dennis. And that was a solid... That's Dennis on Dennis. Sorry. <laughs> Dennis. I knew that was going to happen at some stage. Kill, kills himself. But uh, as you can see there, they do uh, trade that off for the AK. So now Chris J at least has that working from the issue is that his teammates have been dropping like flies. The Godby's down to around 10 HP as well. So again, it's, it's a similar position. We're not expecting them to win. Any weapons away would be a huge bonus. Chris J may even think about just trying to save this AK. Yep, they should. With the economy situation that they're uh, working with, 
which is pretty bad. He should definitely try and save it. Yeah, absolutely. He's got the armor to go with as well. It means he could potentially drop that gun and boost at least the equipment for his team like yeah, that. That's three, important. Yeah. Three thousand one hundred dollars that could come in. That boost would be absolutely phenomenal. So if he can save that. That would be very important. Let's see what he can do. He's actually be all the way towards T-Spawn as well. So you would assume he's going to make it right in that cubby hole as well. But it looks like Makaleli is going to be hunting him down. King Grief is Chris J. Blood. I don't think he's going to come to fruition this time. Ninth round on the board for King Gwyn. They really are running away with this series. Obviously, like we said, this is the best of one. Whoever loses this map is out of the PGL. And it's been a long road for Mouseball as well. A lot of games played. It'll be very disappointing to go out of this stage, but here we go then. They do force back into it, like we said, Chris J saving that. AK actually allows them to get a decent amount of utility on the board. Five smokes, no incendios though. Actually one Molotov for Chris. But King Wynn looks like they'll be going for something very fast again. All five players committing to the inside zone. I tell you what, that Twitch prediction is looking pretty damn good right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all went for uh, Mouse Sports and so far they've been getting battered and bruised. They could still potentially pull this back, but it's gonna be a huge uphill struggle for them to do just that. And King Gwynt, the pressure is certainly off them. They can start to try and maybe try and play some mind games on their opponents. Mouse Sports looking for information, darting around. You can see rotating between the sites now and again. And King Gwynt just really playing this one slow. Maybe waiting for that delayed couple smokes onto the site. And the thing is, because they're on Pop Dog as well, they could easily just bait it and then go around to the A site. <laughs> as the cup goes flying. <laughs> That actually scared me. <laughs> he fell off my I chair. I don't know what happened. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good, though. Here comes next. He's picked himself up a couple francs. The bomb is being planted. So this is a great round so far for Mouse Sports. They haven't been able to stop that bomb from going down, but surely they'll be able to take this back and reclaim a site for themselves. Last player is Makaleli. He's in Pop Dog. He is looking for those orb shots. He's missed everything. He has to just back away. He's given up on this site. And it will yeah. get defused. Mouse Sports do get their fourth. Yeah, and um, King Wynn, Michael Lada, he can afford saving this as well, considering the situation is 9 4 in favor of King Wynn. Still looking really poised and taking this match. Mouse Sports, they're, yeah, well, they're trying to creep it. If, if they can make it a 9 6, a uh, 6 round CT side, obviously it's not something you, you want to have, but it's still something you can work with. And just to analyze the coffee cup situation as well, I was trying to adjust the Wi-Fi on my laptop and actually sent a whole cup of coffee flying across the desk. <laughs> so that's something that's going to be a factor going into this cast as well. So let's see how this one goes down. We're going to round number 14 now. Obviously, Mount Sports needing to get into this one and the producer comes in a bit disappointed with me. <laughs> I wish I could have took a picture of that. <laughs> you look so sad. <laughs> oh, well, that's the life in, in a live production. Things can happen. Certainly can. Mouse sports are uh, they're trying to claw their way back into this. I mean, even if they do finish this half at 9-6, Kingwin is still in such a huge position, and it may not even finish that way. Makalele just sitting there waiting for Nico. Nico has played very aggressively through IV. He's been trying to make things happen. This time around, he will be punished. gobby has been tagged down low as well. And you can see now, because of that early casualty, they've had to stack three players on A. That leaves B very, very vulnerable. 45 seconds to go, and Gobby has answered back. That will alleviate some of the pressure. Dennis, though, has been dropped as well. And so is next. King Gwyn are just getting the frags left, right, and center. Chris J still on that side, has spotted himself the head of Fox, and Gobby does answer back as well. So maybe, just maybe, they can pull this one off. But Chris J's partner in crime, Gobby, has been picked up. And both King Gwyn players are pretty high Ooh. in HP. And there we go, Scream landing the headshot. No huge surprises for that. Yep, and again, Rain going for the double kill in that round as well. Playing a huge, important part in King being 10-4 up here. And it's going to be a really, really bad buy for, for Mossport in this last one as well. We see Nico on the scout. We talked about this being a huge aim battle going in before this before. And right now it seems like Rain is right. just leading the yeah. charge there. What, really, what can you do when you don't have the incendiaries to hold T's off? You only can like, stifle them a little bit. And now we're going to the last round. Look at this fast play. Aggressive round coming in from King They just want to finish this one in style. They know they have the money advantage. Yeah, going for the juggler. They can definitely smell that blood in the water. And Dennis has picked himself up a frag as well, so the UMP and the M4 of Mouse Sports is going to have to come absolutely huge if they want a chance at even getting five rounds on their CT side, which is absolutely brutal. I definitely did not expect it to be this one-sided. UMP coming in front. Chris J. Dennis is in Pop Dog as well. The smoke is going to stop him from pushing for now. A bomb's been planted. You don't really invest much faith here going in with Dennis to be the final player he will get answered at 11-4 on the T side of D train this could be it for Mouse Sports obviously it's a devastating scoreline there needing 12 rounds on their T side to even uh, 
win this map, you, you think that's almost impossible at this stage again, considering the way King are playing right exactly. now. Exactly. It was a battle of the aims, and I think you can pretty much look at the scoreboard and tell, say which team has done a better job at it. Obviously, I think Rain has to be the biggest start of it. Um, he's picked up 17 frags in that first half. Mm. Dennis also with those huge deagle kills to win that uh, yeah. eke round for them as well. So it's just been an ind individual effort. So much better from Kingwin so far. Definitely. Absolutely. So now then we go into the pistols, have a look at the last sports by the two players on utility who everyone heard towards inside right now. Obviously, could utilize that bomb site in, in the inner area. It seems like they will be using the smokes. You'd assume they're going to be smoking off lower ramp, potentially towards upper as well, just getting the players out, planting as soon as possible there, and then pushing down and trying to lock down any CTs that may be waiting there. But you can see a very passive setup now. Luckily, with the silenced USP there, trying to rip heads off, but okay, mouse sports are going to be getting ready to make their way into the bomb site. Yeah, they are waiting. Here it comes. Yeah, that pretty much could have just telegraphed this push. Yeah, I'm going to wait a little bit longer though. Wait for the nades. Yeah, that's exactly it. Flash bang through. There's another smoke. Another flash as well. You can see from McAlady's perspective. He hasn't necessarily been completely taken out this site. He's waiting for that grenade. That grenade could do so much damage. Oh. Look at it. Lux three players so close to death. But the bomb's been planted anyway. That is going to give them such a good opportunity to retake this site. However, Dennis from the side can't get anything done. Chris J's last landed a point blank range headshot as well. The terrorists are ahead in terms of men, but they are definitely behind in terms of HP. And that's definitely going to be the case now with Fox landing the headshot onto Nex. The issue is they don't have a defuse kit, so they're going to have to get a move on. Nico's landed yet another headshot. This time it's on terrain. It's all up to that man, Fox. He's picked up the first frag, but there's not enough time for him to defuse this. So he's just going to go for the frag instead. And he will get it onto Nico. Still low. Round goes to Mouse Sports. And that was so, so required for them. Yeah, that killed Nico caught on, on upper ramp there in that 2 2 situation. Pretty much sealed the deal. And Mouse Sports trying to take that last chance they have. Literally their last chance. Well, absolutely. We saw that tactic. We said the smoke's coming down lower, and it actually quite a nice delayed reply that we thought oh, I'll bait the nades out. But that airstrike grenade from Markaleli did about 170 damage, I think. It was absolutely brutal, but not enough to give them the round. You can see the force bike coming back in, though. Two scouts. It's going to be Markaleli and Fox picking those ones up. The two all players of the team. Uh, they actually get a first tag as well. Chris J going down to half HP after that first confrontation now. Going to be very rough here for the CTs to hold on to this. They're losing players across the board. And it's all on Dennis and Rain. Bomb's been planted. And with the 5-7 armor, I'm guessing again we're just going to see this kind of look for a couple of exit frags, if not pull back, save those. Well, this is the thing. Now you know that the round is definitely lost. Yeah. The bomb goes down. It's a 5 on 2 and they've got the head armor and 5-7s as well. It's just not viable even going for exits. The best option here is probably just try and save them as much as you can. You can see yeah. Dennis going back there. Like Even if he got the kill, he wasn't going to survive. They get, got the information as to where he'd be at that stage. So you've probably just wanted to save the guns and try and have another go when you've got a, even a, a percentage chance of winning a round. But both players do go down. And when you win the first half 11-4 as well, I, if I was calling that situation, I'd probably be waiting for the first gun round just, just to kind of give yourself the best chance of finishing this one early. Like that, we talk about that percentage chance. You don't need you don't need to win that second round when you've got this much of a bed. This is like actually screwing yourself over going to the first gun round now. As now they won't have the AWP or the equipment to play with, and it could be drawn drawn out a little bit further than they would actually like. But needless to say, we go into the next round here. It looks like. Mouseboard's actually going to be favouring towards the pop dog area, going very fast. Chris J already out of main. Yeah, very fast push here. You can see a couple, or well, you could hear a couple things. I think from the USP, so it didn't do too much damage to Nico. That's up in the heaven from Makaleli. He's going to be picked off. Chris J gets a second frag as well. And this, this pretty much is just a throwaway round for Kingwin. They're not hoping to get a great deal out of this one. Rain does answer back, but that's probably all she wrote here for Kingwin. Screen is going to be surrounded. And we saw before as well that Rain has 18 frags. The stat that doesn't read out of that is how many of those have been huge impact frags, like the <laughs> entries right. on the T side. Like, yeah. he, he was just absolutely ridiculous. And I think he's nearly got the most deaths as well. It shows how super aggro he was on the T side. Yeah, but that's always going to be the pay to you pr the, 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 uh, price, the you, price pay. you pay. Yeah, you <laughs> how hard can that be? <laughs> the price you pay when you're playing that aggressive play style that he does. So, yeah, definitely. I don't think it really matters at the point how many deaths he has, as, as he's had so many impact kills here as well. I think we're going to be hoping he can land a few more here because Mouse Sports, although they still have a, a lot of ground to cover before they even get even, they are at least starting the best possible way on the T side. Here we go, though. Here come the weapons. Not a great deal of equipment in the back pocket of King Gwynn.
just a smoke and a couple of flashes with a HE and one defuse kit. This is what we talked about there after that second round force. Mm -hmm. Could cost you more rounds than you actually wanted to. It looks like Mouse Sports once again going towards the inner site. Indeed, will be smokes and flashes coming down. Here comes the four-man push. Dennis is in a good position to maybe rattle off a few frags. And there's the first one and the second one as well. He definitely did his job, though. Two-for-one trade in that situation is fantastic. And there is Scream as well, just answering back. So King Win trying to resume this five-round lead. God B, your last remaining player, doesn't have the bomb. It's dropped on B. And this is a horrific position for him to be in. Yeah, he's going to be stuck towards that T-spawn area. Knows he's not going to get anywhere near that bomb. So... The only option here really is just going to be the full-on save heading towards Ivy. But yeah, we talked about Kingwin that round. Definitely a situation. They didn't have the equipment. They only had one kit between them. And uh, now, after winning this one, you can see they pick up the AWP, stabilize everything. So this could have been a, a difficult situation for them, but they win the first round. And Dennis on the inside bomb site, great movement from him. Read the situation very well. Saw what's going on. The smoke comes down. He just pushes straight up, and the AWP is going to be waiting the first frag for him. And he's always going to win that one-on-one -on -one duel of that range. So picks up two as well and actually wins the round for his team. So fantastic stuff from him. Four players surviving as well. Means actually going to be in a very healthy situation considering the scoreline. Yeah, Godby will be able to save that AK. But that's it from Mouse Sports' perspective. So round 20, economy is decent enough. Are you going to see not picked up maybe from Mouse Sports? I think that would be a wise decision. You can see Nex has got seven grand there. They like to work picks on this map. There we go. Yeah, so Chris J, well, we didn't see him orping too much in the first half, maybe due to because he was playing the inside area, close trained, but let's see what he can do here. Does favour the main area. This time Fox taking more of a, an aggressive push just outside of Dog. Can hear some movement as well, maybe, from the tees. Molotov thrown in just to stop the initial push. Now sports are happy. We've seen this strat a couple times from them already. Just waiting. Look at how much up more up to... Mouseport's face is Kingwin playing. Yeah. Really much, that much more aggressive on their CT. Absolutely. This is what we were talking about before the game as well. A pop flash comes in. Scream's got one and a second frag as well. In fact, it was Fox that picked up the second one, but the uh, end result is the same for Team Kingwin. A two player advantage with a minute to go. And that starves the terrorists of so many options. So maybe going for a bit of a desperation push, trying to avenge their fallen comrades. And they walk right into Dennis. They have got the early trade on him, but there is Dennis. Getting avenged from Scream. So Bomb's getting planted from Chris J. He's got a Nort, not necessarily the greatest weapon in this position. And he's missed the first shot. Very comfortable round for Kingwin in the end. And it really did just come off the back of super aggression now. Exactly, main. yeah. When you're not letting our opponents uh, execute any of their plans they were having, um, then it's going to be that much harder. Especially when you have this much individual skill as in Kingwin. So... Um, it's looking super grim for Mouseports at this point. So two nice pop flashes into main there. Scream, what a player you'd want to go in that situation. Flash players in front of him. Uh, that's his bread and butter really going in and just hitting shots. So he manages to pick up two to open up the round. And obviously the rest of Mouseports there are stuck towards the inside area. And uh, they will crumble. But now they do force bite the round. I say they have to win if they want to have any chance of getting back into this as they make their way onto the outside bomb side now. The Molly's landing thick and fast, but oh Mouseports just walking in single file, and Fox will oblige with two beautiful spray down frags. He will finally get taken down, but here's King Win once more. They've got two orps in play up against Dennis. The smoke is going to help him somewhat, but it has just dissipated. He's on E-Box, very nearly gets tagged on the way across, so at least they have the information of where he currently is. And he doesn't have the bomb, but he will have in a couple seconds' time. So... I guess in that sense, guys, he's got a, maybe a glimmer of hope in this round. The fact there's two orps up against him, I'd say those guys want to get an M4 picked up ASAP just so they can uh, push him when he's actually planting the bomb. Yeah, down. at least if he gets the bomb down. So he's going to be waiting. Some. He has got a lot to play with as well. 50 seconds on the board, a couple of flashbangs, but the different difficulty is it's all going to come down to his little nuances we talk about and the timing he decides to go for here. He's going to make his way into quad, but let's see what goes on. The orps, there we go. The, the, the pick has... Well, the spot has been made at least. Yeah, almost waiting there just outside of main. Try and bait across Kingwin to thinking that he could potentially be on the B side. You can see the Dennis now rotating through. What Dennis Beast rotating through to this side. Spots his opposite number, puts him down with ease. And now Kingwin 14 7. What do you reckon? Is this is this too far gone with that economy? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah they've, they've missed their train, hasn't they? <laughs> yeah, in more ways than one, I'm afraid. Um, so they go that. into this one potentially looking down the barrel of uh, map and match points, it should be said. Like we say, all the games have led to this one. The loser does go out the tournament. And now they are going to do the force full by here. So you can uh, see Tech Nines and Galil as well. 
you assume something very simple required from them just to try and get an early frag. Smoke going out to main. And he's just trying to get the bomb down and force that post plant situation we spoke about. Playing slow again. Molotov's going to stop the push just for now. The distraction play on the outside. They're just trying to get any sort of attention they can towards that outer before they execute in. And that could actually be an amazing start for the campaign. You can see next on 1 HP though. God B's very low as well. So if they do start clumping together towards that site, we could see some uh, Molotovs landing. There's two of them in the play, but meanwhile it's Rain that is putting down the damage and the pain. And he's on main right now, so a very difficult position for the terrorists to flush out when they have such a lack of utility. You can see Nico's being tagged down heavily as well. He's got that Deagle in play. We know what he's capable of doing. Bomb's been planted. Dennis lands the op shot onto his opposite Dennis once more. And Mousebot surely can't hold on to this site with the weaponry that's up against them. It was challenging before the 4 on 1 situation. Is that going to be almost impossible? So 15 to 7, and I think that is the GG officially now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has to be pointed out Dennis is, is hitting a lot of shots as well. And what's impressive about this guy is that he was away for more than a year, even a year and a half actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's just been very good right off the bat. It's not like he's not in a face at all about the fact that he's been away. Um, and I think he's only going to get better as well. So. Kingwin just looking very good and very sharp. Uh, everyone's in the hitting their shots and just the way they're playing as a unit as well. Uh, I mean, they, they like to play the snowball kind of a game where they just try to plow over you with their a lot of skill that they have, but just the way they make it look is, yeah, it's, it's looking good. There we go. Dennis, like you said, you have another frag and make it too because Scream picks up another one and now it's a four and two situation. You have to assume this is it and we're waiting to close this one out. Yep, that life support machine may be about to be unplugged for Mouse Sports. Two players make that just the one now. What can he do from this position? I don't think there's a great deal, honestly. You can see from Akaleli's perspective that God, uh, next, my apologies, is the last player left. He's been headshotted from Scream. And a comfortable win in the end for Kingwin. A game I thought yeah. would be incredibly close ended up being anything but close. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think the scoreline does the game justice. If you consider.